Arsenal injury updates, updates where Arsenal's transfer news is concerned and Mikel Arteta with the goalpost forever shifting. One minute he's the cold manager, then he's Pep Guardiola, now he's Jose Mourinho. I mean, if he can win trophies, that's great. Big up you lot for being tuned in, people. Again, we've got a lot to cover where Arsenal's concerned, so allow me to not waste any time and share my screen with you guys. Again, first things first, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and in some cases, good night. Bless up to you lot. Now, the media have to be a bit dishonest. The media have to create talking points. In light of, you know, Mikel Arteta probably being a bit overly cautious in times defensively and probably being praised more for the defending than the attacking. I know we're not, you know, doing great in the final third. And I just think collectively as a team, we haven't hit that final kind of stride. But for all of the connotations around Mikel Arteta being a defensive coach, year in, year out, and I'm pretty sure at the end in May, we would have scored more goals. Do I think we could create and have more patterns of play? Yes. Would I like to have not only a Santi Cazola, Cesc Fabregas sort of midfielder, but a more attacking ethos? A hundred percent. You know, you look at the Liverpool game, I think Mikel Arteta is right in that we did kind of lack courage in that second half. But the one time we gambled, Salah scored. And I do think the goalposts shift in a sense of people. One minute, Mikel Arteta, you know, Arsenal better yet, when we was naive and flying forward and trying to kind of match teams like even under Mikel Arteta if you remember the early Liverpool games the early kind of City games yeah they would win and beat us and whatnot but we, it was kind of even we was matching we was doing our thing but those fine margins went against us now I think we've gone the other way a bit too much. I think we're a bit too cautious. Defence does win titles and that's great, but I don't know how we win games. Uh, goals win games better yet. And I don't think we can win. Like I said, I love, I don't even think we're at our high standards defensively, set pieces and all the stuff we did last season. And I do think, you know, we've gone from probably too far to the left, being too good, like too attacking minded to maybe being a bit too cautious. If you can't win, don't lose. And um, there's no way around it. We have picked up more points because of our defensive ethos. But you can't win you know i i don't really give a fly monkeys what the media says what the the neutral fans say and i only really care about arsenal fans in relation to arsenal i think we all know we could do a lot more going forward but i think the goalpost shift you know if we were entertaining or wanted to entertain the neutrals and we was flying forward against liverpool we might get some flowers but we could be called naive and we should have probably won the game but ultimately there's a chance we would have got nothing they said that in the two games against manchester city and you know the goalposts are going to shift you know if Mikel arteta genuinely is jose Mourinho or Pep Guardiola, he'll do very well to have, you know, even a small percentage of their careers. But I'm cool with that because they both won trophies. And I'm not being funny here. Why is it like, what's wrong with being compared to Jose? Of course, we want attacking football. But this man, when you look at Jose Mourinho, you think winning. I want Arsenal to be winners. We've done the runner-up thing and it's great being second and whatnot. But the more you don't get over the line, what is this all for? The players have said it. Mikel Arteta said it. Really, the fans want it. So, yeah, I just think it's nonsense. As I said, the goalposts continuously shift. One minute, he's a cone manager. Then he's Pep Guardiola. Then he's Jose. Which, for me, negates the fact that, yes, Mikel Arteta has rubbed shoulders with, you know, been playing under Arsene Wenger, worked with Pep Guardiola, come from La Masia, probably picked up little other bits and pieces throughout his managerial career. But he's his old man, really. And sorry, people, I need to take this off my arm. But I think a large part of Mikel Arteta that forms his ethos is playing for Everton with Rus and David Moyes. Respectfully, they were on the back foot. He understands needing to defend. I just want to see a bit more life in the, in the in the final third because I believe that I love the fact that it's structured patterns of play, but I do think it needs that healthy randomness. So I just think it's nonsense if I'm honest with you. But that's my little mini rant over. What do you lot think? Quickly, let's see exactly what Mikel Arteta has said, people, where the key points of his talk of his press conference are and talk talking points ahead of playing Preston tomorrow, people. Join me for a watch along. I actually will be there. I won't be on TalkSport. Um, on Gabriel, we're still assessing him. It doesn't look bad at all. He was much better than expected, so hopefully he'll be fine. Now, that's quite upbeating, and Mikel Arteta is quite coy on injury news and things of that ilk, but he's kind of specifically told us such. That being said, though, Mikel Arteta does play games where players' availability is concerned, so a pinch of salt. Naturally, of course, Gabriel's going to have tests. Jury and Timbal, you know, prior to the Liverpool game, forgive me if I'm wrong, people, but he didn't play against, and he didn't play, excluding the Liverpool game, the last time we saw him was PSG, so naturally, I think we had to run Timber into the ground a bit more, probably had to utilise him a bit more 
than we would have liked in terms of the minutes against Liverpool. And, psh, you know, he's barely fit, can't really play 90 minutes, you know, got been struggling with injuries really since the start of the season. I think he gave a great account of himself against Mohamed Salah. Timber is fine. He was very tired. He had been out for a while and could not continue the game, but there's no new injury there. Um, on if he had cramp, he said he could not continue, so we decided to make a very safe call. Calafuri will be out for a few weeks. Um, on William Saliba being back from suspension, from suspension, he said he'll decide. Um, I will decide that when you see the team. We all know Saliba probably could play tomorrow against Preston, and thank the Lord, you know he's there against Newcastle. We hope Gabriel is because Newcastle, regardless of their form, it's it's one of the worst fixtures. No one wants to play Newcastle at their place. Martin Odegaard, you know we've missed this lad. Me personally. I thought the Liverpool game would have been the game that, you know, we were gearing him up to play. Obviously, that didn't happen. I now believe, for me, it will be the Chelsea one. I hope he's back for Inter. I hope he's there against Newcastle. Admittedly, I might have got the fixtures um, mixed up. But he said, he's been on the grass for a few weeks, but there are still a few boxes to tick. How fast we can do that last stage of rehab is a question we have to answer then. We have players around and he starts competing with the team, something he has not done yet. So he hasn't joined competitive training, but he's back on the grass, people. He did say he's hopeful he'll be back before the international break, which is coming up, people. We all know we need to find balance. We all know Mikel Arteta is going to have sympathy with fellow managers who have lost their job. Um, we all know nobody is unsackable. Um, we know Arteta has almost been here five years and in the last three and including now, we've now been title contenders. It's now time to win major honours. I would love the Champions League. I think the Premier League is attainable, although you're playing this juggernaut of Manchester City. I think any trophy will help Mikel Arteta because, you know, you ain't got Pep Guardiola or Jurgen Klopp and them Jose Mourinho and their kind of trophy cabinets, which they probably have a separate house. Although we all know the goalposts will shift. If he bags the FA Cup and the League Cup, right, to a degree, rightly so, People will say it's not enough for the money spent, for the way he's talked up as, etc., etc. Naturally, I think there'll be a bit of rotation against Preston, but I don't think it will be as much as we suspect, people. What do you lot make of Zinchenko? Is it fair to say, beyond the obvious, his stock has fallen? Obviously, I personally think the better we've got in you know the last two seasons, including now and last year, versus the first year we was fighting for a title, I think Mikel Arteta has been become a bit more defensively minded, in which I don't blame that because in that first year we was fighting for the title when Xhaka was here, Zinchenko and Jesus debut season, there were times we let ourselves down defensively, and there was also times blisteringly good in the first half, bullying team, second half, you know, heart attack setting. So I don't mind that. But I say that to say this, naturally, if you want to be a better defensive team, you need players that are switched on defensively, in which Zinchenko isn't really. And on one hand, I do believe, you know, he's a midfielder that found himself playing fullback and he's won trophies at City and he's now at Arsenal. Great. And I do believe he's played enough games to need to, to, to use this upstairs at left back. But at the same time, Zinchenko's natural inclination is not to defend. I actually think he's improved defensively, although I think the standard is up here. Zinchenko was down here initially and he's improved here. So, there, you know, you get it, people, where we're going. Fair enough, though. Lewis Skelly preferred, you know, the Shakhtar game, I didn't want to read too much into it, but Lewis Skelly has been preferred to come off the bench versus Zinchenko. So, big up Lewis Skelly, but I think it's very damning, damning on Zinchenko, considering the fact that he was first choice, considering the fact that he won the trophies at City, he knows Mikel Arteta, you know, he probably knows the inverted role, probably the best of all the players, um, essentially. In terms of the final third and all that, he's probably the best of the left-back options, but it's a trade-off because... As I said, Zinni's better in the probably better in the middle and final third than any other inverted left back. But Tomiyasu can do a role and gives you a lot defensively. Calafuri, there's not too much of a drop off. Timber, there's not too much of a drop off. Clearly, Lewis Skelly is a bit more switched on, and I'm probably missing out some an option due to the you know the amount of players we've got. So his stocks on the floor. Those decisions are always very difficult to make. You make them with the only intention to get the result, to get the result with the performance that you want. But Alex has proven already for many years something that he has to do and he has the ability to do it. So you can't rule out him getting back into the fold. But this just tells me, end of the day, I don't believe you're the best option to get results. Unless we are chasing a game and we have to take the handbrake off, Zinni is a myth. On Kieran Tini, who's probably even more forgotten than Zinchenko. I think he's quite close. He's looking really good. I think over the period where he was struggling, so he looks really sharp out there. He hasn't trained with the team yet, but hopefully he can do that in the next week or two. Big up Tommy Setford. I'd imagine David Raya will be playing tomorrow, people, because Neto's not eligible. Although Jack Port young Jack Porter did play in the, you know, in the game against Bolton. So you can't rule out Tommy Setford, people. Um 
And he said, obviously, we brought him here because we know that he's got the qualities we're looking for in our goalkeeping area. But unfortunately, he's been injured, so he hasn't really played. Let's see if we'll play him tomorrow. Probably not going to play him, people. Um, we know there's instability. We know, for me, amongst everything, Lewis Skelly has the personality to have a top career. Big him up. On the Jose Mourinho comparisons, Jose, for sure, I've known him since I was 15 years old. He coached me in Barcelona, so learn. He's won 26, 28 titles. He's someone to really admire the way he's done it, the way he's changed the culture in the clubs, the way he's done it in different countries. I'm with that really and truly because naturally if you, and I don't see this as a criticism, if you want to improve your team defensively, Jose Mourinho is one of the best reference points in terms of, in, in the same way, if you're looking at having a great attacking side, none other than Arsene Wenger. If you can take a bits of bits and pieces of Wenger, of Jose, of David Moyes, of Pep, sprinkle in your own team and we win trophies, who cares, people? I mean, Mikel Arteta, the players, even me as a content creator, we have to take opinions with a pinch of salt. You take the rough with the smooth. You don't read too much into the compliments or that breeds complacency. You don't read too much into the negatives because obviously you'll doubt yourself. You just try and see if there's little bits and pieces that have truth, people. So, yeah, man, that's what Mikel Arteta has said in his press conference. So, yeah, long story short, Saliba's back available. Calafuri's out for a few weeks. Odegaard and Tini are making progression, but are not quite ready. He sounded quite upbeat, as we saw with both Timber and Gabriel, although we will have to probably see what the lineup or the squad is against... Um, against Preston and also moving into, well, into, onto Saturday in the, what was it, 12.30 kickoff against Newcastle? So, yeah, let me know you lot's team, by the way, people, because I, I do think we're going to have to play some players that if we had more depth and no injuries and everything was rosy, people, we'd like to have on the bench, if that makes sense. You could see Asterix next to Saliba and Kai Havertz, his name. And what I mean by that is you could potentially even start Benjamin White, but whether it's Havertz, Saliba, Benjamin White, Obviously, you don't know how the game's going to go, but you really only want them playing 45, 20, an hour at most, if that makes sense. And you do expect to see some rotation. And we ain't got many bodies to pick from, so we're going to have to utilise people. Um, big up young Tommy Setford, young Jack Porter. You know, Neto's inavailable. But for me, I'm going with David Raya. I want to respect the opposition in Preston. I want to go through to the next round, if I'm honest with you. And although we should rock up and win, we got to remember, right, their plays, you know, a lot of rotations affect how we're playing. Got to remember, this is a challenge championship or so sad it's not going to be easy really and i think it'll be a slightly different game to the one um against bolton and it's a good test for the young players then um, i'm going with raya saliba kibio zinchenko moreno declan rice i'd move lewis skelly to right back because if you can play left back you can play right back being a right footer. Ethan needs to start for me, and by God's grace, he does. Ethan's got the keys to roam and do his thing in midfield. He's got the two more experienced midfielders in Declan Rice and Moreno. Kai Havertz, give me an hour. There may be someone like a Trossard. We all know Saka's probably going to play, but maybe a Trossard comes on. Gabriel Jesus goes in the middle. We do something there. But I'm going Sterling on the left. I, I, I don't like Sterling on the right-hand side. Arteta does, fair enough. But Sterling on the left, Jesus on the right. Have us through the middle, Ethan Rice, Moreno in midfield, Zinchenko, Kivio, Saliba, Lewis Skelly. So let me know you lots line up, people. If we move on from that and try and look at the transfer news, people, we've been linked along with us, uh, along with Chelsea and Liverpool people with Nathan Zeze, a 19-year-old nonce um defender in France. Seems a bit raw, but he is a left-footed centre-half, so I wouldn't be against that. And the last young centre-back we bought from France was OK, so I'm all for that. Uh, Chelsea want to sign another goalie. They've actually been linked along with Spurs with Carl Hein. Carl Hein is obviously at Real Valladolid in Spain, people, and is allegedly impressed. Chelsea are apparently monitoring him, and Arsenal will be willing to sell him for 15, 20 million. I'm on that if they want to do that, if I'm honest. Big up Carl Hein, but if they're on that, I'm on doing that. It probably is paper talk. The Spurs thing, I'm not too sure um, if I'm completely honest is that could push for a move away from Newcastle with next summer's transfer window hasn't quite been hitting the heights this season although he backed against Chelsea sources say the 25 year old wants to play Champions League football and is growing increasingly concerned about the chances of reaching that level at his club, current club now Newcastle's forms over all over the place haven't quite matched that season where they got into the Champions League clearly need a bigger squad clearly need that blockbuster sort of signing but I think it's a double-edged sword for Newcastle I I Every time you read Newcastle are linked with a player, it seems like they're kind of crippled with FFP and all them other acronym stuff that people have to look after and make sure you're, you're, you're playing by the rules. I actually think Newcastle might have to have a sacrificial lamb. And what I mean by that is to be able to buy more players and do little things, 
I think you might have to sell Isaac to the highest bidder or a Gamares or something like that. You know, if I'm if I'm completely honest with you, can't begrudge Isaac for wanting the move if alleged. I personally feel signing a new deal. We've got to remember, he's contracted until 2028 or something like that. I'd love Isaac. I know people can talk about injuries, but where's the number 14, which is free at this club? Love scoring against Spurs, Premier League proven. You've got Moreno, you've got Odegaard. I think he's a great... I don't think he's the only option, but Isaac would be the dream. I would, would not mind Jokerez, would not mind Isaac. Wouldn't mind us going for it at uh, Sesco. People are getting on to me for Ferguson at Brighton, and I know he's not doing much, but you would have seen over the weekend. Big up Kai Havertz, but I do think we need another striker. I think you either have to bring in another... Ideally, you get a striker and a winger in it, but I think we need someone with strong numbers. Now, I sound like a hypocrite because Kai Havertz has picked up where he left off in the second half of last season. What I think last year he got like 12, 13 league goals. Forgive me if I'm wrong or whatever. Um, and I think he'll get close to that, right? Trossard did well last season in that regard. And, and there are players that can score goals and chip in, especially with set pieces. You know, you're, you're seeing the Morenos, the Gabriels, them, them kind of brothers. But I just think in August, and I said this then, Saka is the only one you bet on that's getting strong numbers. Like you genuinely, it's not to diss the players, but if Kai Havertz doesn't necessarily get double figures and Trossard and Jesus and Sterling and definitely Martinelli based on the last two years, it's not that you're not shocked. It's not that you're not asking questions, but you're not shocked. You genuinely be shocked if Saka doesn't get double figures for goals and assists. And as I said, ideally, you get a bagsman of a striker to go with Kai Havertz doing his thing. You've got Martinelli, hopefully he gets back to good form, but you've got a blockbuster left winger kind of guy. You've got, you know, everybody's firing. But if it's only one of the two, in which I don't think it should be, you either sign that top striker that's going to get 20 odd goals, although we need to create chances, or you get someone that has sacker numbers. And, you know, we played Liverpool recently. I think it's very on brand when I say this in that Firmino, a good player, could score goals, but the burden of of goal scoring and making a difference in that regard was an on Firmino. He obviously scored goals. He was a facilitator. He was all of that kind of stuff. But you had Mo Salah and Mane, strong numbers. I think you could mimic the Liverpool thing because let's be honest, Science, being linked with these players is one thing. Signing them is another. Obviously, the, I would love to have our very own Erling Haaland or if Haaland wants to sign for us, it'd be crazy to join us. But we'd love a Haaland. If not, do we mimic the Liverpool model? So, We'll have to see, really. And when you look at the price tag, apparently Arsenal are reportedly ready to spend 120 million euros on Isaac people. I'm not too sure. And I'm not saying Arsenal don't, because I do think we are getting slowly but surely into that territory where, of course, there's players everywhere. Scouts can find players, really. But I do kind of think we're getting to that scenario where, because we don't need much. I'm a hypocrite because I think we need a... a I think personally, you know, when everybody's fit in defence, cool, but we could, in light with what's going on right now, I think we could do with another defender, ideally someone that could play all across the front four, front back four, apologies, um, maybe a centre-half, clearly need a goalkeeper or two. I might be exaggerating the need for a central midfielder, depending on what happens with Jorginho and Partey, but I would like a midfielder ideally too i would like another versatile winger and another striker so there is a lot to do but you could argue there isn't in a sense of you just like we don't need much so if we don't need much when we buy players do we need to buy these difference makers and i think is that would be great you can see once again jokarez vlahovic sesco is that these are the names that are thrown around not just with us any team that needs a forward so we'll have to watch that space allegedly on the topic of jokarez he could leave sporting for 60 to 70 million euros a summer move is more likely a winter move is not planned arsenal one of the teams interested i think he's perfect for Mikel arteta's system seems like his manager could be going to manchester united and there's a couple of sporting players i would you know they got that winger they got diamande they got yokarez they're probably all going to get linked with man united i wonder if they join you know room and Aberin over there when that gets sorted out check out the video i did for 10 hard getting um sat by the way people yokarez would be lovely but whether it happens is another thing allegedly his prices has been splat has been slashed in half don't know why because every time you type in yokarez is he's scoring for sweden he's scoring in 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 portugal he's scoring in the champs he just he won't stop scoring really and truly so i'm all for it really i i do think there's a bit of a i do think yokarez would be great for arsenal because i think he can still have good games without necessarily scoring and we've got to remember while we want goals it's what you do across 90 minutes i do think there's a bit of tax and an exchange rate and i don't think you'll get this amount of goals in the prem and also i think naturally because of how we play and the demands of a striker in which let's face it we don't really create for kai havertz up front whoever's there and you have to be kind of selfish you're a selfless hub to a degree for a striker i do think the numbers based on 
if he signed for Arsenal, would still be strong, but wouldn't quite be what you're seeing now. But bringing people, if I'm honest with you, we've been linked with Kenan Yildiz. Now, the more I find out about this Turkish lad who plays for Juventus, the more I want him. You would have seen the game at the weekend. He scored a firecracker of a goal against Inter for, 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 for um, Juventus. If Juventus are on selling him, forget Vlahovic. Sign this guy. He's a versatile a, a attacking player, and I think he'd be perfect for Arsenal. So we've been linked with him once again, people. I'm not on this. Arsenal have been linked with Kolomani, people. Now, we have got a history with French strikers and Elka and Henri, and, you know, you do play for Paris Saint-Germain and that, and I'd, I would hold my hands up. You know, he is still only 25. I'm not moved by him. I, I, I'm not moved. Now, if Mikel Arteta is, you know, fair enough. He wouldn't be the first or the last player that I've kind of doubted and done well. If he, I'd want him to do the best. And for 40 million euros, that could be lit. Maybe we've been linked with him because he's struggling for football people. Um, apparently, United are interested as well as Arsenal. I'm not really convinced on that. We all know Gabriel Jesus and Raheem Sterling need to hit the ground running. Tavares is doing quite well in Italy, people, which is music to my ears. Every time you... you, you just watch him or you read stuff about him, people. He's getting assists. That's great. Someone rides up a great defensive performance in his time, but it's not my problem anymore. He's got seven assists so far this season. Big him up, man, really. And there's a feeling he'll join them permanently. Didn't they sign him with an obligation to buy? Apparently, their club pre president has said, already a capital gain. I wouldn't even sell him for 70 million. We have been, we have been beaten off a lot of competition from big clubs for the fullback. Fair enough. Maybe it's a bit of cap, but fair play. Allegedly, Arsenal rejected a bid for Gabriel Jesus from Palmeiras, his former club people, says their club president. We turned down an approach, people. He said, Jesus is not coming. We got in touch with Arsenal and they said, Lila, there are no conditions whatsoever. We are going to negotiate the player. The subject is closed. Is that because we still believe Gabriel Jesus can get back to his best? Is that because he's a valued squad player and a member of the team? Is that because clearly we couldn't sign a striker and we need bodies? I'm not too sure. I'm not saying these players will go, but you could make a case of if this persists as such as Gabriel Jesus' stock has fallen. He's a great squad player, admittedly. But you could argue in terms of the wages and he's got two or two, three years on his deal. They need to start talking about renewals. Is that worth it for Jesus, especially in this form in which you're nowhere near Kai Havertz's spot. Nowhere near. On ability, of course, you're a better player than Havertz. But in terms of importance for this team and what he gives us, Havertz is doing it. You're not. And you're nowhere near it, really and truly. You are versatile, but you're just nowhere near it. And you could make a case of Partey, Partey going or staying, dependent on the wages. Form probably screws that debate. And that's probably one for another video. Make sure you're checking that out when it comes out, people. Zinchenko falling down the pecking order. Several fullbacks ahead of you on big money as well. Two years left. Tommy Asu, quality player. We never see you. Are we going to lose frustration with that? Kivio, not really a first teamer like that. He had interest from Italy. Does he want to stay in this role? They, you know, they, they, there's plenty of cases come January in the summer if players could be moved on. Me personally, Obviously, if offers come in and we do business in terms of incomings and outgoings, I won't be against it. But even me, like Tommy Asu, Gabriel Jesus, Kibio, Zinchenko, all of those kind of players that you can make a case of leaving, I would shut the door in January. Unless the offer or the bid or mix, A, makes a lot of sense and B, there's other players. Because I think in what we've seen of a couple of months of Premier League football, bearing in mind we're in October, just about to touch November. Happy new month and new blessings in advance for you lot. We need our squad. There's a lot of football to be played, but moving on, you know, onslaught heralded, heralded um, and hailed Bukayo Saka for his performance. And I personally feel, yeah, very disappointed with the media rhetoric around Arsenal versus Liverpool. Um, I'm sure on one hand, Liverpool smelt blood, was there for the taking. It's just, it would have been a statement kind of win. I don't think they've beaten us at the Emirates in the league in the last couple of fixtures. Um, and it was the best time to probably play us. You know, the sentiment was a lot more positive around and around Liverpool than Arsenal, right? Um but I don't think there's a lot of fairness from the media, really. I think if you flip the script, yeah, and Liverpool had all these injuries, and even though I think we're exaggerating that, if they had all these injuries and all the rhetoric and talking points, like we flip everything that's at Arsenal right now over there, had we have not won, there would have been hella question marks and things. Now, I like Arsenal. I think Liverpool are a great club and they're doing great things. And I, I just feel there's too much... Not praise, but there's too many conclu there's too many conclusions drawn on City, on Arsenal and Liverpool, matter of fact, um, if I'm honest with you. And I think considering the injuries and just simply put, not having our best available team, Liverpool had to come back from behind twice. Really and truly, we, we kept their midfield quiet. The only times that they really scored was off the back of, you know, a great part, long ball by Van Dijk. We can see the corner. We let ourselves down for the second week in a row. It is what it is. And obviously in the second half, the one time we kind of gambled and we was a bit braver, 
they hit us on the counter attack. That's what Trent can do, isn't it? And Salah and th those moments went for them. So they had to come back from behind twice. I think there should be a lot of questions. But I did like, I'm not going to read this to you lot, but I did like the way Arnslot spoke about the game. But I just feel in the media, I think Liverpool and Arsenal fans have been done a bit dirty because there's no realness around it. Now we're playing Preston tomorrow people sam greenwood is on loan at them currently from leeds united big him up people make sure you check the video i did with him a few years ago um pick him up um yeah he's playing against us at, from preston and we i hope for our sake he doesn't come to strike us back but big up sam greenwood he said he wants to win he was filled with nothing but praise for arsenal and you know his time at the club man so yeah big him up i mean arsenal chelsea and psg are all still being linked people with um Nico Williams, allegedly all these clubs offered 150 million. Now, with Barcelona's form at this moment, and every time you watch Barca, there's an next Lama see it done. I'm not saying Nico Williams wouldn't be bought, but do they need him? I mean, Lamal's doing his thing. Uh, you know, Rafina got a new lease of life. You know, they probably will sell for Ran Torres. I'm definitely missing out another versatile attacker, Danny Almo. Do they really need no Nico Williams? You know, because no one's really making again. I'm not watching Bill Barber, no one's really making noise about Nico Williams again. I I'm on signing him. We We've been linked with Lamin Yalmao and every other English team. By God's grace, I hope this rumour is right. But we all know this is BS. And no matter how broke Barcelona is, they will sell their souls and sell their bodies before they sell Lamin Yalmao. Right? Well, not really rightly so. That's a wife for that. But you get the point, people. Arsenal are still linked with Brian and Boermo as well, people. And again, being linked, as you've seen, we've been linked with several club players. Whether we buy them, whether we're able to buy them in January is another thing. I would love to sit here and say we sign a striker and an attacker, but in all honesty, I don't know what we're going to do. But yeah, people, we've spoken about the transfer news. We've obviously, you know, spoken about the Jose Mourinho, our tech staff. We've kind of indirectly spoken about Preston and Arsenal's injuries. I'm pretty sure I've covered a lot. But this is this channel is not a dictatorship, people. It's it's a community. It's a family, as I always say. So please, please, please get in the chat. Not just when this video premieres, but get in the, get in the comments. Leave a comment. Smash the like button. Subscribe. Turn on your notification bells and make sure you're following on socials. I appreciate all of you lot. If you're new here, one love. But for those of you that view my content on a regular basis, I keep getting comments in. And I've asked you to be like, there they are, you shadow band. They said I'm not. But it seems like you're either not getting alerts or you're not seeing that I'm live. So the only thing I can say to you lot people is make sure you're following on the socials. Make sure you're checking out the YouTube community tab because that's kind of where I let you lot know when things are coming out. Beyond that, you probably need to start thinking about a Discord group, you know, so I can just drop the link and alert you lot. But yeah, people, man, I need your help. And all of this helps the YouTube algorithm. You know, I thought we could get to 70k subs this year hit a bit of a blip we're kind of stuck at this 63.4 thousand which i appreciate but I, you know i demand arsenal to get better i want to get better for you lot we need to get better people it's a family so hopefully i've given you lots of entertainment in this 20 odd seven minutes people video check out the rest of the content most importantly stay safe stay blessed peace